so rejoining us will be Rebecca Devaney, uh, the co-founder of myodose.ai and the head of training and development at Hoppy. Uh, she'll be talking about leveraging the power of mushrooms and AI to create optimal mushroom vitamin journeys. The session will focus on the symbiotic relationship between mushrooms and AI, showcasing how these two forces can work harmoniously to cur curate personalized vitamin journeys. Please give Rebecca a round of applause. <laughs> Um, so today, I'm going to take, I'm going to do one round of box breathing because I am not only speaking on mushrooms for the first time, but I'm introducing this company. We've been in stealth mode. So today is the first day of Mycodose.ai. So I'm just going to calm down and I'm going to take these 20 pieces of paper and throw them as I go through my notes and just bear with me. Um, so, today we're going to talk about uh, three things. We're going to talk about, we're, I'm just going to put these here and like toss them as I go. Um, <laughs> so we're going to talk about um, the relationship of fungi by focusing on one mushroom that you've probably never heard of and its journey throughout history. We're going to discuss whole mushroom vitamins and how they're um, going to like change all of our lives, and how our company is going to use AI to make that experience better. So this is my personal mushroom journey. Um, <laughs> I'm what you call a citizen scientist. Uh, I have a lab in my basement. I have a traveling microscope upstairs. I have a lot of microscopes. I have a lab in the basement. It started one day when my neighbor took me foraging. And instead of I've hiked all over the world, I looked down instead of up. And I looked down and I saw this magical world. And I don't know what happened that day, but it was kismet. I fell in love with mushrooms in a way that I haven't with any other part of nature. And the cool thing about um, this experience is that now the ends move down, um, these are all things I've built. That's a catamaran for my fogger, for my tent. That's my indoor um, mushroom. Uh, you know, a uh, thing that's my outdoor mushroom garden. And those are the food I grow. Um, so this was just something that I was just gonna have as a lifestyle. And then I just kept going. So, um, <laughs> Alan, <laughs> Alan Rockefeller is uh, one of the best photographers of mushrooms in the world. And he just goes and takes weird pictures of mushrooms in like Ecuador that like are eating caterpillars. And uh, I just love this guy. And he says something really interesting once. He said, the closer we look at nature um, or anything, we can't help but love it. And that's what happened to me where I started foraging every day. I started um, growing mushrooms. And my, I became an advocate for biodiversity, but like pretty hardcore. I mean, I just, all we want to do is like make money on this and give it away to biodiversity advocacy and like protect this beautiful, amazing planet. And it's all from just looking closely at mushrooms. So I guess that I, I um, wanted to get into, um, um, we'll just get into the next step. So, now you know that I'm a crazy mushroom lady, and we're going to continue. And I am. Like, if anybody wants to talk about mushrooms, if anyone wants to go foraging, I'm your girl. <laughs> so does anybody know who this is? Anybody? Otzi the caveman? There we go. Iceland. That's exactly what happened. Um, so Otzi, uh, Otzi is really interesting because um, he was so well preserved. He's found in a glacier and he's the oldest wet mummy that we've ever found in nature. And on them, he, we found these things that gave us clues to you know, how our ancestors developed. And we found stones. So you know, he was using stones as tools. 
And we also found um, a bronze axe, which means that they were already making tools, which is really important. We will get into that. They also found something else. They found the amado mushroom on him. The amado mushroom is known as the flint mushroom, and it burns in a very specific way. It slow burns. It burns so you can forge something in fire, like a tool, which would be the advent of tools, and it would lead to the Industrial Revolution because tools were the first thing that we went around and traded. That's when people started to move to trade. So this is the earliest sort of symbiotic relationship we saw. And even if it didn't, they weren't forging the fire in this slow burning flint mushroom that would be able to be used in these colder climates, it still was being used to preserve, to sharpen. It's pretty incredible to think that he only had a few things on him and one of it was the flint mushroom. Anybody know this guy? <laughs> Any doctors here who took a Hippocratic oath? So a couple thousand years later, we've got Hippocrates. Hippocrates was one of the first surgeons, but it didn't go so well. None of the early surgeries went very well. So the earliest medication we had was actually cauterization or burning a, burning a wound so it would, it would heal. And this actually worked really well because if something, if a limb was rotting or it would stop the bleeding and it would also preserve it, and he used the amado mu uh, mushroom, which he also said was anti-inflammatory, to cauterize wounds. So the earliest, um, the earliest emergency medical <laughs> interventions were the same mushroom that helped build the industrial age. And this is building the medical age. And this was our first, it probably wasn't very pleasant, but it worked. Anybody know this guy? Okay, this is like the OG. This is a, this is a hero of pretty much anyone that's in mycology, uh, Paul Stamets. Paul Stamets is a scientist, a mycologist. He holds 70 patents. He is incredible. And if you've seen Fantastic Fungi on Netflix, uh, you probably saw a lot of him. If you didn't see it, please see it. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. So on the left, we have Amado. And up until 50 years ago, you could just get that in pharmacies because fly fishermen used it to dry their flies because it's, it absorbs water well, it wicks water well, and it was very sad for the past 50 years where pharmaceuticals took, pharmaceutical companies took over CVS and you couldn't get this anymore. But with the innovation age, we now have every application of Amadeo. We've got a hat, we've got these available online, and I think those are some Adidas made of Amado. This is a mushroom no one even cares about. This is the story of just one mushroom. The industrial age, the medical age, the innovation age. This is why I like mushrooms. <laughs> and the story of this one mushroom is the story of all mushrooms. We've co-evolved with mushrooms. We are symbiotic with mushrooms. It's very possible, and I can say this because I'm not, I'm a certified fungal ecologist, but I am not a doctor of mycology, so I can say irresponsible things like, we may owe our very existence and all have developed from fungi two billion years ago because they were here first, and you can just see everyone sort of come off. And mycological innovations are the future because it's been our past. So, I have to join the mushroom renaissance. My heart, my head, my soul, everything about me. I'm taking a real right turn here too. I've had six companies, but none of them have been like this. And this is my business partner, Vamsi. Uh, we've been working on this for a long time and we haven't talked about it. This is my first time talking about what we're doing. And so we are hoping not only to help people cultivate, such as you, such talking about I can tell you all about um, mushrooms that are totally legal, that can help with being calm, being focused, with full body calmness or mental clarity. There's so many ways to improve your health, vitality, and wellness using mushrooms, and it's all proven. It's just no one talks about it because no one likes to talk about mushrooms because they're like, ew, that's that gross thing on the ground. And it's like, it's a quarter of the biomass of our earth. 
We should pay attention. It's like, it's there to help or kill us. There to kill us. So don't don't go eating mushrooms. There's there's a couple, and really like honestly, the more beautiful, the more likely it's gonna kill you. So I'm gonna just look at my little notes and make sure that I didn't I didn't miss anything really important. Wow, I've gotten all this. Um, oh no, I forgot the Hippocrates quote. Those diseases which medicines do not cure, iron cures. Those which iron cannot cure, fire cures, the amido. And those which fire cannot cure are to be reckoned holy and curable. So if you couldn't cure yourself with amido, you couldn't cure yourself at all. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then, so we've got, wow, I can't believe I remembered all this. So... <laughs> Um, uh, okay, this is the part I'm less clear on, so I'm going to make sure to have these. Um, so, uh, let's see. So, as I mentioned earlier, he was the head of AI and cybersecurity for autonomous systems, mostly vehicles. So, you know, he was with, uh, I mean, he was with Rivian when it IPO'd, and um, he's absolutely brilliant, and I'm very lucky to have him as a business partner and a friend. Um, while mushrooms are mushroom supplements, and we call them mushroom vitamins because that's what they are, they're our core business. Our AI platform, um, Osiris, is really what we care about, like as our primary focus, because there's just no information. Like I just told you a story because I don't have tons of statistics. I'm going to pass along a few, but it is the Wild West of mushrooms, and it is so interesting, and we have so much to learn because. We're symbiotic with them. So these are some of the mushrooms that we sell. This went live yesterday. Um, and, uh, and this isn't important because you can see relax and restore, focus and clarity, energy and stamina. All of these will change. The one I'm very excited about is for her because that is the first, I believe it's the first um, hormone supporting uh, mushroom vitamin. Um, so something that sort of scaffolds the body, and that is just, I think, women have been om omitted from medicine for a really long time, so it's very important to me, especially as a female founder, that we are supporting women's health. Um, and we gotta talk about a few elephants in the room. So I put an actual elephant, but it's like very quiet. Um, so we have to deal with a couple of things before we make the argument for why we're doing what we're doing and why everyone should be taking whole, whole mushroom supplements if you're not already. So 50% of Americans take synthetic vitamins, um, but a third are not getting what the government calls micronutrients of concerns. This is like the big issue. Um, and we, there's a lot of conversation about like, no, synthetic vitamins are great. They're great, they're just like whole food vitamins, but they don't have the coenzymes, the cofactors, they don't have any of the supporting absorption materials it makes no sense, and now studies are finally coming out that like, it, vitamin E, twice as much vitamin E is absorbed if you have a whole food vitamin versus a synthetic one. And unfortunately, folate, um, folic acid, which you know, when you're pregnant, somebody gives you a prescription for folic acid, um, they're finding that the synthetic one gathers in the body and can cause cancer. So um, please don't take synthetic vitamins. So the first elephant is whole food versus synthetic. This isn't even getting into mushrooms. The second one is why mushroom vitamins in conjunction or instead of regular vitamins. And I think that just realizing that the bioavailability, like until 1969, mushrooms were, um, they were in the plant family. The government was like, oh yeah, they're plants. Except they breathe oxygen, they need water, they need nutrients, they need all the things that we are so closely related. We are biosymbiotic with mushrooms. So when you're taking a plant vitamin, you're taking something that is much more foreign, whereas a mushroom literally breathes the same way we do. It's closer to animals, is closer to humans than anything. And that's why the ingredients are more bioavailable. Um, and then 
oh look, those micronutrients of concern a third of people aren't getting. What are they? Calcium, potassium, iron, magnesium, vitamins A, D, E, C. This is like a huge issue. That's what's in mushrooms. So it's the scaffolding of your health. Take all the other vitamins, take everything, but like, please get your micronutrients from somewhere. So my, this is why micronutrients matter. If you don't have them, you're way higher risk for these crazy things. Neural tube defects, osteoporosis, impaired immune function, cognitive function, chronic diseases, isn't that just like everything? Like, like, um, it's amazing that we, in the U.S. core curriculum, um, plants are mentioned in terms of health 88 times and um, fungi once. We have no education around this. I never learned anything about it till I just went off the rails and just decided to become like some weird lab rat in my basement. But like, this is a huge problem. And think about how much this affects, especially like, when you're reproducing, you know, there's so many issues in reproduction now, and I'm wondering how much has to do with the fact that we're micronutrient deficient. I'm gonna check the elephants and see. This is, yep. Um, so, I guess I just wanted to say that just like we saw in the amidos, We've co-evolved with mushrooms. We are symbiotic with mushrooms. And mycological innovations are the future because they've been our past. We, we have been in a little bit of an eclipse where I don't know if any of you grew up knowing anything about them, unless you grew up in like Eastern Europe. You might have had like some amazing knowledge from a great aunt or something. But in general, it's really weird. Um, and these are, these are my coworkers. <laughs> anybody, anybody take any of these? Oh, it's a lot, that's great, I love it. Um, so we've got, we've got, um, does anybody wanna shout out what something does for them? Pick one. What, tell me what, what helps you. Lion's mane is protective against neurodegenerative diseases. Amazing. So smart. Anybody else? Natasha. Uh, Natanya. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. She's just one of my closest friends. I'm just, <laughs> I'm clearly on stage. Turkey tail is used in Japan with chemotherapy to cure cancer. We have clinical studies now in, um, there's a bunch of clinical studies that are gonna find the same thing. Um, there's experimental, even Paul Stamets' uh, mother um, was the only person to survive in a trial because she used turkey tail. So um, it's incredible. These are incredible and tools. You can grow it yourself. And I mean, imagine a world without Natanya. I can't, I can't, half of us wouldn't be here and it wouldn't be half as entertaining or intellectually stimulating. Anybody else? I take a cordyceps for, um, to help reduce neuroinflammation. Cordyceps um, also, in, well, very connected, um, increases ATP, which is, you know, if you want to have your body be strong, um, it's great for working out, it's great for neurological development, um, really amazing. Uh, other ones we haven't covered, Rishi is the immortality mushroom. Um, it's good for everything. Tastes disgusting, I'm growing it right now. Um, but I guess like things to just know about it is that it supports immune function in a way that just about nothing does, so it's a great just standard. Of course, we don't really know exactly who should be taking what with what, and that is what we are trying to discover. And Shaga is like the calming 
whole body calming. Uh, it's really an incredible, and I, I see it more as an adjunct. I mean, you can put chaga with a lot of things and it will, even like lion's mane, which is amazing for ADHD or for anything, for clarity. I take lion's mane every day. Um, if you bring chaga in, it just even creates like a sort of calmer focus as opposed to a stimulated focus, which I think is really valuable. Um, I can talk about mushrooms all day. Um, so, can't wait to see who I add to my coworkers. It's, it's, right now it's C, bunch of advisors, and these guys, but hopefully we'll have more mushrooms. So the future of mushroom medicine, this probably sounds very similar to what everyone's doing here. Personalization, protection, and partner in crowdsourcing. So we want to be able to personalize your mushroom experience, so be able to provide exactly what your body needs based on what you need, whether it's, you talked about relatives that have certain conditions and you're defending yourself before that, or maybe you're having symptoms, things that just scaffold you. It doesn't have to be a cure, but sometimes in, in the case of turkey tail it is. But we wanna be able to get the data to actually say, hey, we know, we have crowdsourced information, and we know there are 500 people that are taking 250 milligrams of lion's mane with 500 um, grams of shaga, and they're sleeping like they've never slept. That's what we want to be able to tell you, and we can. It's just gonna take time and a little creativity, and then we'll be able to predict how it will work in your body, and hopefully eventually how it will work for your traditional me medicine interactions. So this is introducing our AI platform, Osiris, which um, Vamsi actually lives in this. That's why he's not here. He, he lives in um, Osiris. And <laughs> we are, we are um, preparing for these inputs. So because this is his stuff, I'm actually gonna pick up this card. So we've got the data sets, which we want to, um, just the patterns, correlations, biomarkers, anything we're legally allowed to gather because there's a lot of rules about HIPAA and we, we have to comply with all those. But there is a way. And that is with this sort of whole prong solution, we can actually gather a lot of data that's helpful for people. So we want to be able to try different blends that work for people, um, permutate infinite combinations to find the right micronutrients, uh, use machine learning just to sort of iterate on models. There's not a lot of research out there there really isn't. There's very little research on mushrooms, but there's enough. There's enough to know what we don't know, basically. That's what, that's what we are putting in Osiris, and Osiris is hopefully going to, how I've heard it is, Bumsy, like hits a button, and then it just tells us what to do. No, I'm just kidding, I know AI is a lot more complicated than that. Um, so, and then um, anonymous consumer data. So if you go to our website, there's a quiz, and it's an ingest form, and it gathers information that's totally legal about people, and we are going to be able to follow up with a core group of people every month with their supplement journey, and get follow-up data and actually see, are you having those goals met? Are you calmer at work? Are you enjoying your life more? Are you feeling tired in the afternoon still? Like being able to just get this micro data that isn't actually that interesting, but if you add it up, it really does indicate, is this working? So these are ways, as you know, um, let me just make sure I have this. Oh yeah, and so these are the questions we're trying to answer. We're trying to answer, what are the ideal doses what are the correlations and the associations from biomarkers? What are they? No one knows. Um, what are the best mushrooms for different conditions? So we know turkey tail works great for, for certain types of cancer. Are there other types of cancer? Are there other types of cellular multiplying um, disorders that we can use turkey tail for. What is it doing? I mean, just no one knows these things. And I, I like literally live in Google patents. There's almost nothing unless Stamets' name is on it. 
There's a lot in psychedelics, um, which by the way, we we're very interested in, but we're not doing it yet because, I mean, our, our company name is Mycodose. We're gonna just sort of lay low on that one. Um, and so also, uh, where, where can we just, I mean, I guess the biggest thing is stamina, wellness, vitality, longevity, hormones. Those are the things that are driving us. Those are the buckets. And we just want to make sure that we're helping people use mushrooms because we've done it and the people in our lives have done it. And then we realize that we have like this complementary skill set where I'm a builder and my business partner is this super expert. And we're like, let's just, let's just get really weird. Let's just like see if we can actually create a predictive mechanism to help everyone, every body, and that's separated out, every body, um, have an optimum experience. And this is really an invitation because we are brand new and we wanna work with anyone who wants to help. I was born in a um, Woodstock commune. I don't even understand money. My business partner is very good at money. I've had six companies that have accidentally done pretty well, but because I always have a, a, someone, I'm not, I'm a builder. And so I'm looking for partners. I'm looking for people who will push this forward, whether it's sharing science or sharing the good word. Our participants, like if you wanna take the supplements and take whatever you wanna do, this is like a movement for me. Um, I'm very confident my business partner will treat it like a business. I've given him full reign to do that <laughs> um, because I know my weaknesses are the flip side of my strengths, like all of us. And this is, it's been a long trip. We've gone from Otzi in Iceland to AI. And I wanna say thank you. <laughs> I'm grateful. I think you're all brilliant and inspiring and inspired, and it's been just a wonderful time being here. I've had some of the most exciting conversations. I, I just can't believe how many brilliant people are in this room. And I wanna thank the HEAL Conference for letting me do this completely bananas talk here <laughs> that um, made me get this all ready. And then also to Natanya for being just the best friend a girl could have. <laughs>